Hi, my name is Nesan Chaha and I'm presenting on a case of a patient who presented with neuralgia type symptoms caused by a cracked tooth. This 48 year old female was referred to my clinic by an endodontist for facial pain, which has been present for the past two to three years. The positive findings in her medical history included depression and anxiety due to the pain and a history of chronic facial pain. She also reported visiting multiple dentists and physicians in relation to her uh, facial pain. And she reported taking ibuprofen and paracetamol almost on a daily basis for the pain. She reported an allergy to penicillin and a history of knee surgery. The patient was referred to my clinic by an endodontist for orofacial pain, which has been present for the past two to three years, for which no clear odontogenic cause was found. The results of a CBCT scan did not show any pathology related to the teeth on the left-hand side. The patient attended my clinic complaining of pain from the lower left-hand side, which started about two to three years ago. Suddenly, one day while chewing a soft food, where the patient felt a sharp electric-like pain that stopped in, uh, the patient in her tracks, the pain at the time was intermittent with uh, certain chewing movements, but over time it became more frequent and more intense. During the past year, the patient has been getting the pain which would start in the posterior mandible and refer to the lower lip, the temple and the neck uh, on the left hand side, never crossing the midline. The pain is mostly intraoral around the lower left 7 and 8 area, but sometimes felt like it was extraoral, deep in the jaw. The pain was elicited by certain movements, closing the teeth together and certain chewing movements with certain foods, such as seeds, and the patient had not been able to eat on the left-hand side. The patient did not report a focal point where upon touching would elicit the pain, and the patient reported the sharp pain would last a few agonizing seconds, then subside to a dull, throbbing ache in the lower jaw for a few hours afterwards. The pain had not been nocturnal or spontaneous. The clinical examination didn't reveal any lymphadenopathy in the orofacial or cervical areas. Mesenteric hypertrophy was detected with moderate tenderness in the right mesenter with no referral. The left mesenter uh, was mildly tender and the trapezius was also mildly tender to palpation. The other muscles of the orofacial and cervical areas were not tender to palpation. No clicking was detected in the TMJs bilaterally, but there was no, uh, no pain to palpation. Uh, the maximum opening and mandibular movements were within normal range with no deviation, and the cranial nerve examination was within normal range, uh, including the sensory component of the trigeminal nerve in all three divisions. The intraoral examination showed moderate tooth wear and bilateral uniform occlusion was detected. None of the teeth on the upper left hand side were tender to percussion. The lower left molars were tender to percussion and the lower left 7 and 8 were slightly more pronounced. Using a tooth, loose to, uh, a tooth sleuth to uh, test for the presence of a, a fracture in the teeth in the lower left hand side, a severe sharp stabbing pain was elicited on the mesolingual cusp of the lower left third molar tooth. On close inspection of the cusp under magnification, a fracture line was detected in that cusp as shown in this picture. And the patient reported that the elicited pain mimicked the chief complaint exactly. No other fracture lines were detected when tested the other teeth. And when a cold, uh, uh, when a cold test was used, all the vital teeth on the uh, lower left hand side were positive with somewhat exaggerated response, response in all the teeth compared to the other side. No lone standing periodontal pockets were detected around the lower left th third molar, but hyperalgesia was detected around the lower arch compared to the other side. The radiographical examination was within normal range with no bony pathology and the condyles were well corticated with no signs of degeneration. The endodontic treatment in the lower left six seemed lacking with a fractured instrument in the mesial root, but there was no periapical pathology visible on the radiograph.
Based on the history and clinical examination, a diagnosis of crack tooth syndrome associated with the lower left third molar was given, which was believed to be the primary cause for the patient's reported symptoms. A diagnosis of masticatory myalgia uh, in the right masseter muscle was also given. Bruxism is considered one of the causes for incom in incomplete uh, tooth fractures, in uh, leading to symptoms of crack cracked tooth syndrome. This is especially the case in older patients with aging teeth, where cracked teeth were found to be more prevalent in patients between the age of 30 to 50. In general, cracked teeth are often readily identified by using clinical tests such as bite tests, transillumination, staining solutions, and five, uh, pulp vitality testing. What can sometimes be difficult to detect clinically, and uh, the symptoms can sometimes mimic other conditions such as sinusitis, temporomandibular disorders, certain headache conditions, including trigeminal autonomic cephalalgias, and sometimes can resemble neuropathic conditions such as trigeminal neuropathy and trigeminal, uh, and trigeminal neuralgia, and call, can also present as ear pain mimicking the diagnosis, uh, making the diagnosis challenging. The treatment plan for this patient included anti-inflammatories to reduce the pain and inflammation in the periapical region around the lower left 7 and 8, where periapical periodontitis was suspected due to the tenderness to percussion. There appeared to be reversible pulpitis in the teeth as well, given the slight exaggeration in the response to a cold test. The hyperalgesia in the area was thought to be due to peripheral sensitization given the long-standing pain in the area, which I thought would also benefit from a course of anti-inflammatories. An exploratory cavity preparation was also recommended to assess the extent of the fracture line in the floor of the cavity and a possible sub subsequent restoration to assess the pulpal response in a bid to retain the tooth. A stabilization splint was also recommended to reduce the damaging effect of bruxism and parafunctional habits on the remaining teeth, and the in-position was recommended regularly during the day to the patient. A referral to an endodontist was also recommended to explore the endodontic treatment need for the lower left six. On that day, the mesolingual cusp was removed from the occlusion to reduce the risk of eliciting the pain. The patient was reviewed four weeks later, where she reported improvement in the symptoms except for occasional sharp pain when chewing harder foods. The restoration on lower left eight was removed, where upon close inspection, another vertical fracture line was detected in the mesial marginal ridge, which joined horizontally under the mesiolingual cusp with the other fracture line detected originally. The fracture in the mesiolingual cusp seemed to be extended slightly subgingivally but the tooth was still deemed restorable. A biodentine restoration was placed on the tooth with a view to assess the tooth four months later. The patient contacted my practice three months later where she presented with symptoms of irreversible pulpitis where the tooth was severely tender to percussion with an exaggerated response to cold test which lingered for over 15 seconds. And when asked, the patient reported that up until her recent symptoms started, she had been completely pain-free. At that stage, the patient opted to extract the tooth rather than consider an endodontic treatment, which was carried out under profound local anesthesia. During the procedure, the patient reported slight pain sensations around the mesial part of the tooth, where further anesthesia was applied, including buccal infiltration of articane, which proved effective and the tooth was e extracted uneventfully. The patient was reviewed one year later for her general dental care, where she reported that she has been pain-free since the extraction. In the course of her treatment, a stabilization splint was constructed for the patient, which, had been which she had been tolerating very well, and her overall dental health had been stable and she is on a recall program in my practice. Crack tooth syndrome can present with unusual symptoms, mimicking other conditions which can make the diagnosis challenging. A thorough examination and history taking can often reveal signs and symptoms suggestive of a cracked tooth which can guide the investigation and lead to the correct diagnosis. And here are the references I use for uh, this presentation. And thank you very much for your attention.